infinity and, and beyond! Welcome to the Grok Shop in part one in my series, The Cody Compendium. In this video, I'll be talking about Cody. I'll do a little quick demo and uh, talk about the network setup as well as talk about what Cody really is good for and perhaps what it's not so good for. And here you can see some of the topics I'll be covering in the rest of the series. Okay, so what is Cody? Cody's a media manager and it's been designed from the beginning to be a media manager and primarily for home theater use. Um, but that role has evolved somewhat. There's Kodi applications now that you can run on almost any device on your PC, Mac, uh, phone, and some people have even hacked it into Roku devices, but it still remains primarily a media management platform. That's uh, not to say that it can't do streaming. You can do streaming on the Kodi platform. I've done it myself. Um, and the streaming area gets a little fuzzy. There's there's legal ways to stream and there's not so legal ways to stream. And some of the big providers don't have add-ons for Cody at this point, um, but there's still ways to get it. And I'm not advocating that in any way. I'm just saying it's possible, uh, but that's really not what Cody excels at. There, there's actually a lot of alternatives to get streaming, whether you want it you know, free and legitimate, or you want to pay for it and be legitimate, or you want it you know, free and illegitimate. There's other ways um, that you can do that that may be better suited than Cody itself. Um, however, sometimes it's nice to have everything all rolled up into one box. I'll be covering streaming in more detail later on in this series. So I put together this diagram for you guys to show kind of a typical modern home theater setup. And as you can see there in the right uh, middle where the arrow's pointing, there's a little Cody box. And um, next to that, you'll see a Roku box, and uh, they both go feed into the uh, AV receiver, which feeds into the TV and speaker system, of course. And on the back end, um, in this particular setup, I show a NAS or a large file server and a database, which Cody connects to so um, you can have multiple Cody devices throughout your house all hooked up to the same uh, media so everybody can share the same content you can actually set it up to stop in one room and pick up in another room um, there's a lot a lot of things that you can do uh, having uh, all the media in one location but of course, with the streaming device, the Roku device, it bypasses that and just hooks up um, directly to the internet. In case it's not obvious, guys, the dark lines with the solid balls on the end, those represent HDMI cables. And the thinner lines with the hollow balls at the end, those represent network connections, so Ethernet or wireless connections. So clearly for some people, Cody won't be for them. If you're not housing your own media collection, if you're not into that, you want to stream everything, I wouldn't even bother thinking about Cody. But to me, I like, I like having my own media. I like having my own music library um, that's always available. I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to pay a subscription to get to it. And um, that's just how I like to roll. And there's really not a single better um, way to organize your home media than Kodi. And it's free. The only thing is it's very configurable and it's, you can get overwhelmed if you start digging in very deep, which is part of the reason why I made this series. Um, I'm going to try to show, you know, what you can do at a high level. And then for those that are interested, I'll do some deep dives as well. So you can see I've organized my Kodi into top level or home menu groups so that, for example, I can get to all my surf movies right from the very top or all of my animated features right from the very top. Um, it's always possible to drill down and get to whatever you need when you drill down, but sometimes having it at the very top level is mighty convenient. Of course, I'll be showing how to do that later in the series.
So besides organizing your media, you can also decorate it with Kodi. And um, if you configure it properly, you can have it download what's called fan art, which is basically a bunch of images related to your media. And you can see some examples of that here. And um, it really kind of dresses it up and makes it a nice visual, especially for music, because you can have the fan art displayed um, while your music's playing. Like here you can see some fan art um, for Yes. Little, little scraggly looking picture, but you know, it's old and it's Yes. But um, it's, it's something that can be a little tricky to get configured right. And that's a, a topic I'll for sure be covering in a lot of detail. And it's changing all the time. With every new release of Kodi, there's um, new approaches to getting the fan art and the thumbnails done right. And um, I'll be covering that and um, hope you guys get something out of that part of it. There's definitely a lot to learn there. Now, before you can even really get started with the fan art within Kodi, you want to get your media library organized. And if you're like me, you know, thousands of songs, hundreds of movies. Um, I've got a lot of stuff on disc I haven't even ripped yet. And tons of stuff I need to procure still, new versions, higher resolution. Uh, it's always an ongoing battle, but you end up with so much media, uh, it can get overwhelming. So... I've actually done some work reviewing tools that'll help you to uh, prep your library, sort of groom your library, if you will, to get it ready for Kodi and uh, the best possible way in the shortest amount of time. Honestly, when it comes to this sort of thing, it really just goes down to how exacting you are. If you're very uptight about it and you don't mind spending days upon days, you can do a lot of stuff manually, but there are tools for those of us who don't want to spend that kind of time to speed the process up. And as you might have guessed, I'll be covering this topic in a lot more detail later on in the series. Now back over in the column of things that Cody's not necessarily so great at would be personal media. So pictures and movies from your phones and cameras. Um, and I don't know why, but they've just decided not to make it a priority thus far. Um, I wish that they would give it a little more priority, um, and I think eventually they will, and um, and that'll be a good thing. But until that day happens, I really can't recommend Cody as a personal media organizer for your own media. Um, but you can view your media within Cody in a kind of simplistic way, and there's add-ons you can get where you can have it like do a slideshow of your pictures while... Um, it's in screensaver mode or something of that type nature. And I'll get into that more later on in the series, of course. One of my favorite features that is built right into Kodi is their smart playlist. And they have this one called Party Mode that... Um, you just basically turn it on and it randomly selects music and you can actually customize the music that comes on during party mode. It's basically just another playlist like any other. And um, this thing is uh, an awesome way to um, just hit a button and randomly get music as opposed to going out and you know you, know, you, know you, want, you, know you want to hear this artist or that artist. Sometimes like you forget what's in your library <laughs> and you just you just need to randomize it a little bit. Other times you're like, uh, now I remember why I wasn't listening to that song. But um, either way, it's a nice feature that's built right in and I'll get into the playlist, smart playlist and regular playlist, including how to um, control the party mode playlist later on in the series, of course. One last feature I wanted to mention before I rolled out that's really awesome about Cody is the built-in skin system. Um, anybody who knows Cody at all knows about this, but if you don't know Cody, um, the skin system is just a real easy, slick way to change the look and feel of Cody with no effort at all. You just basically look up the skin 
and tell it to change to the skin and you get a whole new look and feel. And then, of course, you can customize most skins to different levels, different degrees of customization are um, built into different skins and they're by and large built by the community of devs who support Cody and um, there's some really cool stuff out there and of course I'll be going through a few different skins and the pros and cons of the different skins and uh, how compatible they are with say low-end um, processors that you don't want to overload with you know a lot of um, bloatware or something so of course I'll be getting into that later in the series a little bit more detail and um, showing you um, some of those so that does it for part one guys I hope it's been helpful for those of you who needed an intro we'll see you guys in the future parts of the series if you have anything particular you want to see about Cody be sure to let me know that's how it's done thanks for watching mm -hmm.